I missed the meeting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think, um, well, I do. To answer your question, uh, I have something from all three of my television shows. Little things that just I thought were interesting. And there are things that would be thrown away. They're, they're not, you know, I didn't take the, the red Mercedes. Okay. I didn't take that. But uh, on, on Man from Atlantis, I took the eyes that I had to wear. I had to wear special lenses. And so I took those and I had them because people can't believe I did that. They're not dissimilar to the eyes on the top of your hat. <laughs> and then from Dallas, I have uh, two things. Um, before Daddy died on Dallas, before Jock, you know, literally he passed away, before he, he left the show, um, there was a picture over the bar of this old man with a beard, and it was Miss Ellie's father, and that was Grandpa Southworth, okay? And that was just a, a, a picture that they found in the prop department at MGM. It wasn't, you know, it, it was worthless, but it was behind the bar for, for two and a half years, and then when, when Jim Davis died, they put Daddy's picture. So I just took that picture. And I, I had Grandpa Southworth from Dallas. And then in the reboot, I had the pillow that was in my office, a leather pillow. Because what most people don't realize is a little piece of boring trivia for you. But, you know, JR was John Ross Ewing. That was what the JR stood for. I'm Bobby Ewing, but I'm Bobby James Ewing. But I'm actually Robert James Ewing, so I'm R. J. Ewing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the little leather pillow that was on my in my office on the reading of Dallas, the producers, I told them that piece of trivia. So on my little pillow is engraved uh, R. J. Ewing. So I took that little piece, and and then otherwise I just feel so aware of stuff. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. You mentioned you are writing poetry. Yeah. Can you recite the verse or two of one of your poems for us? I haven't committed it to memory, but I wrote one last night that I sent to Linda. Uh, and unfortunately, it's. I don't. Do we have one second? Um, we have five minutes left. Five minutes. Uh, Linda, are you out there? Not my Linda. <laughs> 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 Linda, do you have my phone? You have two Lindas now? <laughs> she has my phone. Wait a minute. Okay, you have a story. Did she actually have a story? There it is. This is not the other Linda. <laughs>
great story because all of our children would have children. You know, so it would be, you'd have to find the subject matter that could still be funny. And, and now that Susanna's gone, then it would be a single parent thing. You know, maybe Frank would find love again, now, who knows? So the, the question is always, is it a good story? If it's a good story, I would do anything to work with that casting. Um, I love being around those young people. Um, we still have fun, we were together just three weeks ago, um, almost all of us. Um, so yes, uh, it would be something I would definitely do, but it would, it would be a difficult storyline to try and invent. But if there's a brilliant writer out there who can do it, you know, and a network that wants to, to film it, then I'd be the first one in line. Absolutely. I really hope that one. That. There's, there's one emotion or feeling inside of me when I think of both of your most famous characters. And, and now, when I met you, I think that that stems kind of from you. And that was this, you know, more calming, that, that you somehow emit around you. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, you, you seem to maintain it to this day, despite that there are some like, objective tragedies that happened in your life. What do you do to maintain your mental health and this positive attitude? Well, I mean, there's the short answer and then there's the, the long answer. The long answer is, you know, live your life, uh, take everything that life hands you, as an obstacle or a benefit, and be determined to create value from it. Um, you can create value from anything. A, a, a setback is just an opportunity. Uh, but also, a, a great opportunity can be a major setback. So it, it, it really relies on your determination to create some sort of value all the time. The, the other answer to that question is the, the ballerina that I fell in love with uh, in, in 1972, um, was a Buddhist, you know, and not, not a Buddhist who wears robes and, you know, shaves her head, and she's a beautiful ballerina, and she just practiced the philosophy of Buddhism, um, and because of that, I did too, and for the past 50 years, I have every single morning and every single evening done the practice of my practice of, of, of Buddhism, uh, which is a it's a chant, but it's a meditative sort of thing that where every single morning I make a determination. Uh, and you know, what I want to do, how I, what I want to change in myself, what I want to do for the day, just sort of the complete inventory of my life. And then in the evening, I sit there and sort of give myself a grade on how well I did. You know, where I fell short, where I succeeded, how I feel proud of myself. I never feel um, uh, disappointed in myself uh, because I feel that everything is just uh, like a good teacher. You should never make a student feel stupid. They should make a student feel like they have great potential to not make that mistake again. You know, so in, in that sense, that's what I try and do on a daily basis. So, you know, and yeah, there have been some major setbacks uh, in my life uh, with my parents and then, you know, losing my wife seven years ago. But uh, again, I here I am in an in incredibly loving relationship that I think, you know, in some, you know, science fiction -y sort of way you might relate to that, that I think my wife might have had a hand in me having this relationship that I have now. That she wanted nothing more than for me to be happy, you know, for the entire 46 years we were together. So here I am happy, I know it must please her, you know, so, um, all of those things just make me realize that this, this, this section of time that we have, you know, can be the most beautiful uh, extension of our of our lives that is imaginable. But it completely depends on us that we can't look to our environment to make us happy. But if we're happy, our environment will be incredible. So you know, the short the shortest distance between two points is that straight line. Just be happy yourself. You know, if you, if you don't feel well, smile. You know, not everybody smiles because they're happy. Some people smile as a cause to become happy. You know, just give a smile. Even though you feel like crap, you know, smile at somebody. I guarantee you it'll change the way you feel. So, uh, 
you know, those are bite-sized, you know, uh, uh, fortune cookie, you know, explanations. But they have, uh, you know, they have a deeper impact if, if you apply them to yourself. And, and be very honest with yourself, you know, with the, the terrible language. But the, the, the expression is, you can't fool somebody, but the real expression is you can't share a shirt. <laughs> so, you're the one person that you can't lie to because eventually you'll have to admit it. So just take what you've got, you know, make it better, and you'll find that the, you know, more people are smiling at you as a result. And it, it just makes your life a lot more enjoyable to live. Thank you so much, Patrick.